Hello and welcome to this fourth Sunday of Easter. It is a packed Sunday. It is not only the fourth Sunday of Easter, it is Good Shepherd Sunday and Mother's Day. Uh, we want to give thanks to God for the gift of our mothers and what appropriate readings that we have for this weekend. I'm going to do, it's a very short gospel, so I'm going to read it, right? Uh, from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Um, as we begin to reflect on this uh, Good Shepherd Sunday, I like those words uh, from the Gospel of John. No one can take them out of my hand. And then as if we didn't hear him the first time, he says it again. No one can take them out of the Father's hand. You know, uh, there are no throwaway uh, lines in the Gospels, considering how much uh, uh, paper costed back in the day. So let's unpack that for a little bit. No one can take them out of my hand. Um, what is going on with that? First, when I say today is Good Shepherd Sunday, immediately for me, I've been spoiled by Christian iconography, right? When I say Good Shepherd Sunday, what begins to form in my mind at least is a picture of the Good Shepherd, and that is a Jesus who has... Um, a store, uh, a red sash and a lamb on his shoulders. Or maybe a Jesus who is loving on a little lamb. Or maybe a Jesus who is walking ahead and the sheep following him. That is the image that begins to form in my mind. But if we go back to that line from Gospel of John, no one can take them out of my hand. Um, that reveals a lot and it invites us to unpack this gospel passage, what does that mean? So this image of a Jesus caressing a little lamb, uh, it's a beautiful image, or oh, a Jesus with a lamb on the shoulder, it's a very beautiful image. But I'm afraid it doesn't capture the essence of this gospel passage or what the author of John is trying to tell the first Christians who received this message. So let's go back. Uh, in order to understand what is going on here, I think we need to go look broadly. So what is, the, the Gospel is written around the year 100-150. This was after the fall of Jerusalem, after the fire. Um, the group of the, the early church, um, the, the, at least the recipients of this letter of John, uh, were not eyewitnesses. Remember we, uh, we, we read at Easter, these things have been written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ. So they were not eyewitnesses uh, to, uh, to Jesus of Nazareth. Um, they are probably second generation Christians, right? So what is going on with them? Um, they are having a lot of challenges as an early young church. Um, they've just been kicked out of the temple, out of the temple, out of the synagogue. Um, there is a split among them. There are some who think John was the Christ and not Jesus, considering Jesus' his death. And so in the early chapters of the Gospel of John, he goes to great extent to say, John, John was not the Christ. He himself said that I am not the Christ. He was not worthy to untie the sandals of the Messiah. So he goes, he pushes this narrative a lot that John was not the Messiah, but Jesus is. So there's that little uh, split, and that's a discussion for another day. Uh, but they were kicked out of the temple, out of synagogue, because they were causing trouble. They are uh, announcing this, uh, th that Jesus is, is risen. Uh, and this message is not settling well with the Pharisees and the scribes. And we hear that in today's first reading. There's another trouble. Um, one thing that we know about the Romans is that they were good at squashing insurrectionists. All the followers of Jesus, the apostles, the eleven, or most of them, had been massacred. Including, of course, Peter was hanged, including James, the brother of the Lord, James the Just, he was martyred as well. So they were all being killed. Who is hunting the Christians? 
the Romans. Why are they hunting the Christians? Because the, this Christian community is going around saying, Jesus is Lord. At this time, it is not a very good idea to say Jesus is Lord. For us, to say Jesus is Lord is uh, a proclamation of our faith. For the early church to say Jesus is Lord was um, giving it to the emperor, right? Because it was Caesar is Lord. That was the saying, Caesar is Lord. That was what was written on the coins. Caesar is Lord. But for the Christians, they are saying Jesus is Lord. So where is the early church? The early church is... Um, is, is going through what is called the great persecution. They are being hunted down left, right, and center. They are being killed left, right, and center. They are facing so many challenges. They are not going out and, and preaching. Yes, the gospel is growing, but it is... <laughs> It, it is growing, but it is growing with a lot of difficulty and a lot of challenges. Uh, so the Christian community, the early church, is, uh, is a very destabilizing community. It, dis, you know, uh, it brings confusion in the, within the religious leaders because of their approach to God and their announcement of God is very different from the Pharisees and the scribes. It is destabilizing to the Roman government because they are claiming Jesus is Lord and... Uh, the emperor uh, doesn't like that very much and they're persecuted and actually blaming the Christians for the fire, for the great fire. So, having established that, now we open this passage. No one can take them out of my hand. Something is threatening the very life of this early church. And to this early church that is frightened, he says... I am the good shepherd. No one can take them out of my hand. No one can take the sheep out of the father's hand for the father and I are one. Uh, now, this whole language of sheep and shepherd is, is quite foreign to us, right? I'm going to put it in another way, in a way that you and I could understand here in the United States. And, and once I mention it, you will understand completely what Jesus is talking about. What changes in your mind if I say that Jesus did not say, I am the good shepherd, but Jesus said this, I am mama bear. Once I say that Jesus said is mama bear, for most Americans, we immediately understand what he's talking about. Mama bear is not the no, one carrying the lamb. Mama bear is not the caressing one. Mama bear comes out as the fierce, fierce protector. Okay? When we talk about mama bear, it is always, almost always in relation to the cubs. The gentlest person can say, I was mama bear. And we don't have to explain. We know she went into a protection mode. Somebody was messing with her children. And she needed to be there for her children. They needed to be behind her. And she was the one going to face uh, the brutal attack of whatever is coming their way. Mama Bear is the fierce protector. This is exactly what Jesus is saying to the disciples. Not, um, yeah, there is that. But he's saying to the early church, which is scared and afraid, don't you worry. I'm mama bear. The emperor will have to deal with me first. In the Gospel of Mark, it says it beautifully. He says, I am the gatekeeper. You know, no one will come in unless they go through me. And when Jesus is the gatekeeper, nothing touches the cubs. Nothing, nothing touches the sheep. Nothing touches the early church. Now, who needs to hear this today? Do you sometimes feel as if your very life is under attack? 
to those who probably have been diagnosed with cancer, to those who are probably going through a divorce, to those who are probably going through a troubled relationship, to those who are going through maybe financial difficulties. You Sometimes I feel like pressure is coming in from all sides and it gets to me. If anything gets to you and steals your joy, listen to this carefully. If anything has gotten to you recently and wanted to steal your joy, to change you, to paralyze you, you need to hear this. Nothing, nothing can snatch you from the Lord. St. Paul puts it beautifully. He says, what can separate us from the love of God? Persecution? Hunger? They, and he says, there's absolutely nothing that can separate us from the love of God. This is the sense that we have to hear on this uh, Good Shepherd Sunday. Jesus saying to the early church, yeah, you feel, uh, you feel alone, you feel threatened, you are scared, you are paralyzed, but I want you to know that I am not just uh, watching this from a distance, that I am fully engaged and you are in my hands. And since you are in God's hands, rest assured, do not worry yourselves to death. John, uh, St. John uh, even says this in, the, in, in John 14, like, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. You have faith that you are in the hands of God. And I love this. Um, there is actually another passage uh, in the Hebrew scriptures that portrays this sense of the fierce protector very well. It's a story about Saul. He, uh, no, a story about David. Uh, he was tending the sheep of Saul and he saw a lion come and attack um, uh, the sheep. And he says that when I saw the lamb between the jaws of the lion, I went over there, ripped the mouth of the lion and save the lamb. So the picture is on one end there is a lifeless lion, on the other end there is a sheep barely breathing, and in the middle there is a bloody David who has a given everything to protect the lamb. Do you feel that with God? You know, uh, I was saying earlier that it, if I stood up in Africa and I said, Jesus said, I'm mama bear. People would look at me and like, what's he talking about? Why? Because we don't have bears. But if I, I was home and I said, Jesus says, I am the lioness. Ah, oh, we understand. Mama lion is the protector. Mama lion is the one who goes and hunts for food. People think that the lion is the king of the jungle. The lion sleeps all day. It is mama lion who sleeps with one eye open. It is mama lion who provides. It's mama lion who protects. You do not want to encounter mama lion, the lioness. She is the protector. On this day, we also celebrate Mother's Day. How appropriate. Uh, the greatest protector that we have is the gift of a mother, isn't it? I have said this before, that if, if, if God loves me more than mama does, God must love me a whole lot. And under the same breath, if God looks out for me more than mama looks out for me, God must look out for me a whole lot. I was on Instagram the other day and I saw this little clip that kind of captures today's gospel passage. Um, there was a bear um, and its cubs on a wall trying to get in somebody's yard and the dogs came after the bear and they were barking and there was a small little dog that ran up to the bear, it doesn't know, the dog doesn't know how small it is and mama bear just goes and snatches the little dog and, <laughs> and out of nowhere comes this woman running towards the bear. And she's screaming and she's just running towards the bear. And the bear drops the dog. And I sat there thinking, she's a crazy woman. She ran towards danger to save her, do her dog. Don't touch her dog. 
but that's love. That's being a fierce protector. And that is what we celebrate on this Good Shepherd Sunday. God is our protector. God is the one who will face the brutal attack. And I hope you feel it. It also says in today's gospel passage, you know, my sheep hear my voice. What, what we do Sunday after Sunday is to train ourselves to hear the voice of God. And the question is, what do you need to hear today? What do you need to hear from the Lord? Is it to say, hush, I am here? Is it to say, I've got this, or you've got this, because I am here? Is it to say, you are loved more than you will ever no. May we hear the voice of God that comes to us through the pages of Scripture, and may we see and hear the voice of God that has come to us through the gift of our mothers. I pray that today you have a very blessed day as we reflect on Good Shepherd and as we reflect on your Good Shepherd, Mama. God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.